live now on Twitch. We've got some audio. <coughs> Let me do a quick check. Here, that goes over there. That goes over there. Um, let me turn off this alarm. Set the other alarm. Then need an audio check. Testing one, two, three. We're good. Okay. Okay, 284. <clears throat> Where's my button? You ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 284 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. My name is Hiam, and Tom is still there. Hi. Tom is still there, which is always a great thing. So I know we haven't been here for a couple of weeks, but once again, it's the same old, same old. There's no like real security thing. There's a war going. There's a special military exercise. I think that's what it's being called going on. There's a lot of misinformation. Depends on where you live in the world. Uh, in literally yeah. one country, it's a special military exercise. Uh, in every other place in the world, uh, it is a war against people. Uh, who do not deserve war. Correct. And I saw a book today, uh, instead of War and Peace, a Special Military Operation and Peace. And I, I, I did laugh at that. Um, I know I do feel bad about what's going on. However, again, so it's unless you want to hear about more NFTs and gorillas being uh, being stolen from OpenSea and other things, that's a different podcast. That's not us. There's... I mean, there's still ransomware going on, but what do we talk about? So, so again, it's it's tough to keep a show going, but so we decided we we started this a few months ago. But I said, what does it take to get a job? Like, we we, we talked about that before, but okay. So you you did some stuff. What should you put on your resume? Which like literally how you should apply? What you should look for? What are some I don't know, buzzwords or whatever it is. And I said, Tom, hey, can we uh, YOLO this live? And he said, I think we can. So so you want to get started? Yeah. Um, now, to be clear, let's say it again. We, we're YOLOing this live. Uh, so we, we don't really have any notes. Um, I'm just going by what I've seen in my career. I've done a lot of resume reviews. Uh, I would... I would hazard a guess that my career has been relatively successful um you know please feel free to join our signal group and tell me that i'm wrong um but uh yeah um in all transparency up until about three months ago my resume was like nine and a half pages um so if you encounter people that say your resume needs to be one page and only one page, because that's the only thing people are going to read, I don't think that's particularly true, uh, especially if your resume is in a CV format that you know has everything you've ever done for anyone. Um, that said, I cut my resume down to about two and two thirds pages uh, with only the, the top highlights of my career. And yeah, that seems to have worked recently. So... I don't know. Um, you do resume reviews. You've you've helped people I, build those. I mean, look, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get people into teaching, which obviously qualifies as you need a license to do that. But people say, what do I do? And I don't even want to talk about the resume. It's just, it's how about, it's just different things. I have to tell people who say, I don't have five years of PHP experience. I'm like, you went through four years of college. Did you write PHP in all four of those years? Yeah. So put that you, an entry-level job should not have five years of PHP experience. So say that. Use your words. Say what you have done, even as minor as it is, because they're still looking for people. They're, we can't find people to do just about anything. So if you can say that you know HTML or CSS, the 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 machines, the machine learning algorithms that pick up on the resume, they want to see that. And 
I, I never said lie, but if you can figure it out in the time period that they're going to talk about, like you have a vague understanding, put it down and learn it. It's If it's this type of job and you want to do it, pick it up and learn it and, and see how far you go. You'd be surprised. You would be surprised how many people say they're an expert and really can't do it. Yeah, that's that's the one thing to to be wary of. It's if if you put like rock star ninja expert this specific technology, uh, your interviewer does have a chance, um, you know, to be an expert in that field. Um, you know, I I have experience working for companies that had some pretty influential programmers who have built programming languages. Well, one of the uh, one of the interviews that I heard about through the grapevine at this company was somebody put, you know, programming language expert on a specific language. Well, they were being interviewed by one of the core architects of that programming language who really tested them on whether or not they were an expert. Needless to say, they weren't. Um, so you can put, you know, you have experience, but be careful, you know, throwing around uh, claims of expertise if you don't really have them, right? Um, certifications can help. Um, I'm probably the, the one of the poster children for not having any paperwork, right? Beyond a high school diploma, I literally have nothing. I have no college degrees. I have no certifications. And at this point, it's become kind of a messed up badge of honor for myself to say I have no paperwork. I just have a lot of successful projects. Um, and that's one of the things that has helped me build a resume is when you do something impressive, put it on your resume. Your resume is your greatest hits collection, right? You're, you're not there to, to say, oh, well, I mean, I kind of did this and I was okay at it. And I guess I had a hand in, you know, doing this thing for these people in this successful way. No, 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 no. This is a resume we're talking about. I, I successfully deployed this thing. I had this impact to the business. This many users were affected, um, and it ended up resulting in this type of promotion or recognition, right? Like the most impressive resumes to me that I've reviewed have project. It's here's what I did. Here's who it affected. Here's how I did it. Here's the recognition or the response from that thing. Um, keep the star format in mind, right? Situation, task, action, and result or response, depending on which version you're. Um, the star format is a really nice shorthand or, or a really nice rubric to basically take any job situation, any professional or educational situation, boil it down into these parts and then present it to somebody in a way that shows here's the situation. Here's what I did to it. Um, like here's here's all the hard parts and, and the stuff I had to go figure out and the real meat of the work. And then here's the result, right? If the result is hey, we onboarded a hundred different Chromebooks to, to this educational system. Cool. That's a good result. That shows that you can operate at that scale. Uh, if it's, you know, I increased the efficiency of this core process of the business by 57%, put that in there. Data is always a good thing, uh, especially if there are dollar figures attached, right? One of the first things I did in my career was I... I built a, a Windows uh, XP to Windows 7 migration pipeline, and we literally tore up a million dollar contract. Uh, and I, I saved the company that million dollars, which is an awesome thing to put on a resume. Um, I personally did not get a million dollars. I was a little bummed about that. But hey, it worked for aligning the resume. So I didn't lose. I mean, as I tell my uh, seniors in high school that they're going on to college or the college kids that come back and talk to me, it's, if you made a media server on a Raspberry Pi, put that down. Put down. Somebody was talking about they put their own pull requests on GitHub and they closed their own pull requests. And, sure. and, and I said... And somebody was making fun of them. And I go, no, that's good. Like you can see that, that that's actionable. That's actionable stuff. You were able to follow directions and do it. Like you made a retro pie and you played games on it on your weekend. Put that down, document it. I mean, if you're into TikTok and social media, record it, put it on YouTube. You may, you may find, you may get go viral on that and saying that, Hey, you made this and, and here it is in a clear and concise way. And you can put that on your resume before someone sees it or on a website i mean as stupid as that sound it's really important don't trivialize the things like oh somebody 
somebody can do this. Um, one story somebody told me, and I should sit for the P, I'm going to say wrong, the PMP, that's the project management exam. Um, one of the things they said is planning your wedding counts as X number of project management hours. Things like that. And you're like, what? No, no, seriously, it does. Each of these podcasts that we do, the the time we go before, the actual recording, the time after, say we did 287 podcasts or 84 podcasts, because what it shows is that you have a commitment to this. If they may not care, they may never listen to it. They may, they may, or they may, uh, but they hear it and they say, wow, this is important that you had this commitment to it and everything else. And and so I like I tell the people trying to look for entry level stuff. Don't just say just because you're you don't have 15 years of experience or you don't know every single distributed platform, you don't know what they want. Put it there. They'll if they like you, they need somebody. They'll find a way to get you hired. Even things that you wouldn't ever consider putting on a resume, especially if you're just starting out, can be super valuable. So if you're trying to get a job in IT, right? That's that's what I know the most about. That's how my career got started as I went from like in the trenches, IT help desk answering phones um, to right now I'm a programmer. Um, so like if you have ever had to help out a non-technical family member with computer things or issues with phone or networking or Wi-Fi or I mean, you you know the thing we do. Uh, we do at least two episodes a year on going back to your families for, for Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, winter holiday spread. Um, if you have helped out people with technical issues, well, if you're getting started, if you want a job in IT, guess what? That's end user support. You have experience in it. You can even put, you know, uh, completely like uh, rewired or rebuilt uh, Wi-Fi for uh, a small home network. Um, that counts. Right. You don't have to say I helped my grandmother back up my photos. Instead, you say, you know, helped a client, uh, you know, back up X number of gigabytes of photos for the past 10 years onto a, you know, multi-factor secured uh, online cloud repository. Which means you've hey, never. I, I loaded up OneDrive or Dropbox or whatever, and I put grandma's photos in the cloud. I mean, you could dress it up however you want, um, but it's still experience, and that still counts. You wouldn't install a token ring network on a small office. A token ring network. Now, if you're trying to get a job at a at a very antiquated place and you have token <laughs> ring experience, yeah, that that might be helpful. Um, I did put that on a resume. I don't know, twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But what I did is I installed a small network. I installed Wi-Fi at my parents' house that they ran a business out of. There you go. I mean, because it's... a small, medium business to enable wireless connectivity. I mean, I mean, if you're helping your family members with the phones, uh, I'm... If you if you can jazz that up a little bit in a video or something else, or you find something, you find some really cool tricks. I'm not saying make your life on TikTok, but something like that would be make YouTube shorts or whatever it is. Show that you're that. What I find is that a lot of people they they get stuck in one thing. They do hardware and they only do hardware. So you bring up a software question, they have no idea. And same thing with software, they. And they don't want to expand past that. You have to show that you're you're trying to expand past that. And so if you can talk about both of those or different things or how you deal with people or whomever, that's what people want to see. They want to see that, that you're going to fit into their company, that you're not just going to sit in the basement and leave me alone. They want to see how you communicate. They want to see how you talk. They want to see all that. And they want to know that you're, I, do I dare say fun? I mean... I mean, did, yeah, it's great that you did. The, you should be you, personable. Yeah, that's the right word. You should you should be doing this, and they want to see it. So I always tell people just do your is mine. If you have nothing to show, as minor as it is, do your best and put it down there, and don't be afraid of five years or seven years or whatever it is of you not have that because. Remember, if you think hard enough and you work for, you can do four, you can do two years in one year if you work 4,000 hours. The, Somebody um, said that. <laughs> if you work overtime, two years could become a lot more. 
the um the other thing to to mention is that um academia in particular tries to push people towards specialty right towards specializing in in a very specific area or maybe a couple of specific areas of technology especially as you get into you know postgraduate degree anything beyond an associates or a bachelor's degree it just gets more and more specific until you get to the phd level and you're literally expanding human knowledge by the smallest most smidge percentage but hey you're doing things that no one else has done it's the whole purpose of a phd um don't discount the generalists like if you really want to get super into networking and get down to like the electrical level of how networks work do it if that's your passion if that's what interests you if that's what you want to make a career out of you know don't let me or anyone else stop you um but if you don't really know or if you want to try a bunch of stuff out or if you just get bored easily like i do don't discount being a generalist because that can be a huge benefit to companies out there Right? Do you need me to 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 wire up server racks or to run cables or to explain things to non-technical users or to program you a service or to architect your uh, your system design in a hybrid cloud model? Well, yeah, I can do all of those moderately well. I wouldn't say I'm an like a true bona fide expert in any of those areas, but I do everything kind of pretty decently good, I guess. Uh, now, don't put I do everything kind of good, I guess, on a resume. That's not really selling yourself. Um, but if you have experience in a lot of different areas, uh, especially if you're joining at a small shop and you can do a, a little bit of everything, that can be hugely valuable. Um, pigeonholing yourself into one particular area and like narrow focusing the jobs you can get, especially starting out, isn't, I, I would argue, isn't really the best place to be. Uh, unless you really, really know that that's where you want to end up and that's where you want to drive your career, uh, right? I started in IT. We worked in just, like, putting phones on people's desks, right? Like Nortel systems and uh, bashing apart, like, uh, Windows XP and Windows 7 and working with cheap Android phones and expensive iPhones, uh, you know, Windows servers and Linux servers, and, like, just about every technology under the sun we touched all of it because the business did a lot of random stuff and I was able to help out with most of the projects because I had dabbled a lot in a bunch of different stuff because, I mean, frankly, I got boardies. Um, but it was, it was enough to get me started at a company that gave me experience in all of those areas just a little bit deeper. And then I went to the next company and had experience with most of those areas just a little bit deeper. And, you know, now 20 some odd years later, here I am in my career where, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of the same generalist type work, just way deeper than I did when I was just starting out. Well, to piggyback off that, you were talking about different things um, that a company, a small company may need something like that. So you can be the best network person, but, or the best hardware person. But if someone says we need software to run this, and you're an expert not in that, you really can't help. If you are if you dabble on everything, you don't need to be an expert. You can say, oh, I think I can help you solve this problem with this thing that I learned a couple of years ago or whatever it is. It's having even just a slight experience in so many different things, you at least can troubleshoot or technically help with some part of the problem. And then when your expertise is up, there's nothing wrong to say, okay, that's above my pay grade type, type response. And Absolutely. say, look, I... Like I can, look, you want me to network? I can network a school up. Okay, but now you have to get into different subnets and do that. That's going to be a little more challenging, but I got you. I got you the, I, I wired it up. I got the wires there. I learned, I crimped the cables. I did that. I did all the hard, the hard work. Now you need somebody to do that last little bit. And that can save a company a lot of time and money instead of paying these huge support contracts just because you, you only know, you only know IPv4 and you know nothing about IPv6 or whatever it is. So that's also another important thing that I do want to talk about certifications. I know that Tom is really anti all of this. But I'm not saying that you, you have to focus on all that. The, the, the idea of degrees and things like that is it, it shows that you've committed to starting and finishing something and you have some basic knowledge. Um, I'm not saying to go no degree, no cert and just go on your GitHub page. But 
I mean, Tom did it really well, but if you can get some sort of basic certification or degree or whatever it is to show that you've done it, it makes people feel a lot more at ease that, look, we, we talked about this. I got my security plus certification in August. And as much as that doesn't hold much, I, I feel a little proud of myself doing that. Um, but it shows that, hey, I'm able to do this. Uh, I may go back over the summer and get A+. plus Again, not because I really want it or it'll help me, but just to say, hey, I got that and I feel like I can tell somebody because I don't have anything on my website or anything that says I, I can put hardware and software together, except for the fact that everyone knows I can and they call me up all the time. But just just little things like that. If you can get a basic certification or the entry level, it it does open some more doors that 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 you would have to push there through an interview process. So if you're not especially good at at, at demonstration or explaining yourself, having those certifications will absolutely help. The other thing that can really help, and in kind of a, a critically underlooked area within engineering schools, at least the engineering schools I came from, um, is communication, especially writing. Um, so in a digital first era, especially in uh, a lot of companies that are going remote first or virtual first, being able to write well and communicate well uh, is a absolutely critical skill, especially for engineers, right? You're not always going to be talking to the most technical people around, right? Uh, you, you might be talking to people who have no idea what your field consists of, but you still need to help them with their problems and like make projects work in the end, right? You're, you're an engineer, uh, right? You can be an IT, still an engineer. You can be a software developer, engineering. You can be an electrical, electrical engineer, still engineering. But at the end of the day, our jobs mean nothing unless we can talk and communicate to people to not only gather requirements and figure out how to make something successful, but also just to explain what we're doing and be generally personable people. Uh, one of the best things you can do, not only to learn for yourself, but to help develop these skills, uh, is start a home lab, but don't only start a home lab and like, you know, play with Docker and web hosting and building services and all that fun stuff and like group policy. Don't only do that stuff. Write about it, right? Even it, like if it's a notebook that you keep on your desk, cool. If it's a blog, even better, because now you have a portfolio to just point people, right? Get yourself a domain name or like a free WordPress blog. You don't even have to spend money, right? Throw something up on Blogger. But, right. That's all you have to do is just start writing about it. And as you practice, you will develop more. You will get better at the act of writing, documenting, and communicating. And that is hugely important. Not just for resume writing, but to be able to talk to people, to express your ideas, to, to take the stuff that's in your head and communicate through this lossy medium we call language to put your ideas into somebody else's skull. Because that's really what communication's all about. And if you can do that really, really well, you can get a job purely based on communication alone. Uh, there are entire fields out there that are just, hey, we need good communicators. So if you can have the technical piece and the communication piece, you are head and shoulders above the rest of the candidates. Um, the amount of times where I've seen extremely smart candidates that were just technically the most perfect candidates you can get for a job, but they couldn't communicate. Like, I, I've seen it a hundred times over at this point. Uh, and it's really sad because you know these people have the skill sets, but they're just not going to survive in a business world where they can't talk to them, right? Um, or, or because of the fact that they can't talk to me. So having that well, communication gonna, level is super important. What I was going to say is anything you buy, run it through somebody, run it through your wife, your significant other, or a good friend and justify that expense. I think running it through someone who's not may, maybe not technical and say, I need 5,000, I need a new gaming computer and justifying it also really helps because it shows that you know how to spend you're dealing with the money or whatever else but i was saying we we've seen a lot of teachers who are really smart about whatever subject they just couldn't teach kids not they could it's not grading papers or anything else they they knew all about whatever it was but when they stood up in front and had to teach and have 24 eyeballs look at them they just couldn't do it and and it was like and 
And I'm not saying you have to be able to do that, but you're going to have a few eyeballs staring at you while you're trying to convince someone to spend money or to get you this or get you that. And so I, I like that idea of, of not only writing, but if you, if you need to purchase something, try to run it through somebody, try to convince them that this is what you need and being able to understand, wait, wait, you need this. Why not this thing? This clearly inferior widget. Why, why do you need the more expensive one? And I think being able to explain that is going to take you a lot further because you're going to need that for you. You're going to have to explain to your boss why you need to spend more money on security that has no forward facing benefit other than I don't want to get hacked later and have to call the insurance company. It's it's I don't want we need to install chips on all the credit cards. That means we need to replace every single person's credit card. For what benefit? Is it going to make us money? No. Is it going to make the transactions faster? No. Well, it causes us that well, it, it will be more painful, yes, but it will save us insurance money later. Things like that. So, I don't know. I feel like we, we don't talk enough about communication. And I think that you can hide a lot of negatives in the fact that you can communicate and and go from there. I don't know. Do we want to talk about dressing up? Do you, do you dress up? It, it honestly depends on the company. Um, if, if you're going to get a job at like a large scale financial firm and people are walking in and out of that building wearing, you know, uh, three piece suits. Yeah, just go with the flow. Um, if you are getting a job at a large scale, uh, we'll just say a, a large scale tech company somewhere in the Bay Area or even the Pacific Northwest. Don't wear a suit into the office. Um, your recruiter, the, the person who you're talking to to try to get the job. Your recruiter will not lead you wrong. Listen to them, follow their advice. If they tell you not to wear a suit, don't wear a suit. Because if you wear a suit into a suitless environment, you look like a clown. If you wear jeans and a t-shirt into a suit environment, you look like a clown. Follow the crowd, right? You want to try to blend in as much as possible. So if people are wearing suits at the business, well, do the same. If they're wearing jeans and a t-shirt, cool, wear jeans and a t-shirt. Um, just, you know, make sure the t-shirt is irrelevant. Like, don't don't wear, like, Beer Fest 98 t-shirt if you're not going to work at Beer Fest the company. I, I don't have a good example here. Make sure it's appropriate, right? Wearing an EFF t-shirt to get a job at the EFF, probably a decent idea. Yes. It's not, not terrible. Wearing a plain black t-shirt anywhere, yeah, it's probably fine for mm. most Bay Area tech companies or startups. Um, the other thing on communication, companies like force multipliers. They like people who are playing that support role in video games, who are there to, to buff up and, and empower the team around them. Uh, if you can put on your resume something where you have trained somebody or mentored or tutored, they love to see that because they know by hiring you, not only are they hiring you and getting your help, you're going to help your team become even better at their jobs. You're a force multiplier. You're taking whatever forces are there in the team and just making them a little bit better. And that is huge. So uh, especially if you are at a job right now, uh, even like IT trenches, right? The way I worked up the, the ladder from answering calls to being the, the senior student assistant at my college of choice. Uh, was I just took people under my wing when they had technical issues and taught them how to solve the problems. I wasn't aware at the time that I was doing anything special. I just loved talking about this stuff and loved teaching people about cool technical things. Uh, but it turned out to be one of the most defining aspects of my career is training. Uh, so yeah, teach. And it's the best way for you to learn. You will never know a subject better than when you try to teach somebody else and they break it wide open. Uh, I have taught programming languages to a lot of different people. And oh, man, the ways people break in, in massage and maneuver programming languages into pretzels that I've never seen is incredible. And I would not be as well versed in some of these languages had it not been for those people. Uh, so teaching is not only valuable for them, it's valuable for you, too. If you join our signal group, I like to post work that I have to try and explain or figure out if it's okay or not. Is this cheating? Is this not cheating? And some of the mental gymnastics, like you said, of what people do to get the job done on a deadline is is staggering. Um, 
And then I was going to say, we're, we're just about out of time. And I was just going to say, if you're doing a Zoom interview or wherever it is, you just want to act a professional and you want to be presentable. So look at your home office. I'm not saying it has to be perfect office, but but if if you're a remote job, that's where they assume you're going to be working. Make sure that's presentable. You're presenting yourself for the first time. I am not. I am. I am all pro suit. I will wear a suit. I I will wear a suit all the time. And what somebody told me, at least in teaching, was yeah, you don't wear a suit every day. But if you can wear that suit that first day to the job interview, they know that you know that you have to dress professionally. But that is an education only type stance, um, like you said. I don't know what a recruiter is. We don't have recruiters, but I'm assuming it's the same idea. It's uh, it's listen to what the person is saying because they're going to know best. So if somebody t- if somebody knows this culture and say don't do this, you you, you follow them because they're going to know more than you, especially if you're not versed in in the culture around you. So, do you so I will to, say, do you, do you want to do some some light social engineering or, or social reconnaissance or open source intelligence? Um, well, like if it's a small company that that has you know a a public parking lot, um, it just go you know, go park, like especially when, around noon or so. Watch people walk in and out of that building. Don't be creepy about it, right? Don't don't like try to evade security guards or anything like that. But I've worked for businesses that have that are basically just storefronts, right? Um, sit outside in your car. Do you see people walking into that building wearing suits, like? clearly employees well okay that'll inform how you're supposed to go in there is it is it khakis and a polo cool there you go like you can get a lot of information just through google through just observing the business and honestly that can really help you especially if you know the name of your interviewer right and you know that hey they like this certain sports team we're getting over into the gray hat area but i've used these tricks before right then the if if it's a super casual place, maybe consider wearing their favorite sports team jersey. Um, right? Goes back to what you there said. Are, there are ways to tip the scales in your favor that aren't necessarily unethical. Don't hack well, somebody's Facebook account to get all their personal details. Don't be creepy about it. Uh, but also, don't ignore the signals if they can. Look, they're, you're, you're, if they're going to pay you money, they want to make sure you're part of their team. And and the interviewer needs to know that that you work well with others, and because if you work well with them now, when real problems happen, they need to know that you're going to work well with them, and or they they need to know that you're there for them because it does cost a lot of money. When, and I'll end with this: one of the things I always get people get afraid about is, oh, I can get fired the next day. It's like no, if they went through the, all the stuff to hire you, they want to see you succeed because your managers take everybody who interviewed you will have egg on their face if it didn't work out. And and that's not all true, but they, they worked hard to get you there. So if, if also give them that benefit. If they work that hard to get you there, you want to stay there for a, at least a little bit so you understand that. But but don't think like, oh, I screwed up the first day of work and I'm going to be, they're going to fire me. They're not. But they want to know that you're a team player. So I will end with that. Be a team player. Yep. Just so get along with, with people. So we'll end with this. We just said that. Join our Signal group. Find us on Twitter. Join our Signal group. Tell us we're wrong. Tell us we're right. If you want to see more, again, hit us up. We'll, because I think this was a really good episode. I really did enjoy it. And I think more people are going to want to hear more about that. So with that said, I'm going to end it. And we will see everyone not next week. Definitely not next week, but probably the week after. So have a good night, everybody. See ya. Stop.